Right on the outskirts of Kununurra is a ripper little watering hole called the Hootree. Now running the Hootree is Kaelin. Kaelin, what's the history of this place? Oh, the history. Well, we started off as farmers and we're still farmers, um, but somewhere in the middle of farming, we decided to make rum. And then a few years after that, we decided to make gin. So, it's, yeah, but we're still farmers today. And um, so we, I guess we've got the boat. So when you decided to go into distilling, whose idea was it? Oh, certainly not mine. No, I'm not brave enough for that. Um, my father, Spike, who's on all our logos and and our branding here. Um, yeah, so my father Spike started the distillery. Um, I think people honestly thought he was crazy at first, but now it's a pretty known industry and he's, he's sort of known for pioneering it in Australia. I was lucky enough to meet your dad. I was standing about right where we are, maybe eight or nine years ago when I met him and he was a larger than life character. Yeah. I can just imagine he was the first bloke that wanted to build a still. Yeah, yeah, look, he always built things. So even on the farm, he'd made lettuce seed harvesters, pumpkin seed harvesters and everything. So when I look back now and think, well, he started a, or built a distillery, I, it doesn't surprise me at all. And even the room we're in now, everything in it is hand built from recycled materials. Uh, the big beams are from the hydroelectricity when the turbines were put in at Lake Argyle. So I was a child, probably eight or nine years old when he collected that wood. And I said to him, what are you gonna use this for? And he said, oh, we'll use it one day, it's too good to burn. And so he was always thinking ahead and, and just always looking at his resources and, and what it, could he turn it into. Clearly a clever man, he's gone yeah. now, unfortunately. Yeah. But, but now you're sitting in the seat, yeah. how does that feel? Oh, I look sad some days, like I worked with him for 11 years and thoroughly enjoyed it and learnt a lot and felt very blessed but of working with my brother now and, and my mother's still on the farm and so I feel a bit of pride in carrying on what he started and it's grown over the years so well now we make several liqueurs, we make rum, we make gin, we make a whiskey that's purely corn growing on our farm and um, so genuine paddock to bottle, so we do a single release. Paddock to bottle. Paddock to bottle, yeah. If you're not looking to drink on an empty stomach, Hoochery Distillery have a plethora of options for the entire family. And um, then after your meal and a cocktail, hopefully you go on a tour. So we run tours at two o'clock and they are always run by our distillers. Well, we might try and organise our guys to go through the tour and then have yep. a tasting, is that Absolutely. okay? That sounds like a great plan. Don't finish it if you don't want to. If you're driving, definitely don't finish it. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that burns! <laughs> oh, that's oh, burning all the way down. <laughs> Everybody who works here tastes everything. Everyone fills out a score sheet and we basically score everything on a scale from best to yuck. That's all I want to know. I want to know if you like it or you don't. Um, and then from that, we can work out a bit of a pattern and, and get a consistent product. Overproof in the middle, so that's going to be a higher percentage. It does have quite a kick to it. However, it is very smooth we charcoal filter it. So we take out that harshness to it. I shouldn't try that one. <laughs> it, is, it is dangerous. You do want to take your time with that one. But it is still very lovely. Bryce found his favorite part of the uh, distillery trip. Patting the dog. <laughs>